Good evening, folks. How you doing? I'm nice to see you. Yeah. I'm Ryan Lee Crosby. You're watching the Extended Play Sessions live from the Fallout Shelter. <laughs> Thank you.
told me and they showed me and I worked it Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thanks so much. Love to call up my, uh, my friends and bandmates. <clears throat> and uh, so I hope you'll help me in welcoming Ilana Katz Katz on the violin, Jay Scheffler on the harmonica, Grant Smith on the calabash. So, uh, whoa. <clears throat> this next song we're going to play was inspired by um, a trip, one of many I've taken, taken down to Bentonia, Mississippi, to spend time with Jimmy Doc Holmes. We were sitting on the front porch of the Blue Front Cafe that he owns, which is the uh, oldest juke joint, oldest continually running juke joint that's been in operation since the 40s, uh, 1948 think. Um, he was showing me how he plays I Asked for Water by Howlin' Wolf, and I noticed in the way he was fretting his chords that uh, it reminded me of some things I had, I had observed in the playing of uh, Bubakar Traore from Mali, who's one of my favorite musicians. So Jimmy showed me how he played it, and then I, I went home and I just started playing it and playing it, thinking about the uh, Mr. Troy's guitar style as well as the, the Bentonia blues style, so Bentonia, West Africa. And then it kind of just started becoming something else. Uh, the next thing I knew, I had some words to it, and the next thing I knew, we were playing it. This is called I Got a Feeling. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Well, it's so nice to be with you. So, so nice. This is a uh, very special place. You could feel it from the moment we walked in the door. When I arrived here, my muffler had been dragging off the bottom of my car for about 70 miles. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't feeling so hot. And um, Bill and Connor took the muffler off the car for me. And yeah. <clears throat> you know, when you're when you're a working musician, if you don't if you're not, you know, particularly well known, you never really know what you're gonna get when you show up. You don't know if people are gonna be glad to see you. It could be anything. And uh, in twenty four years of uh, playing shows uh, all over this country and Europe, nobody's ever taken a muffler off my car. And I, I will never, I will never forget it. Yeah. But that is, that is just the icing on the cake. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to see you all. And this next song we're gonna play is uh, kind of a new song. It's, it's called Already Gone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Feeling feeling all right, I hope. Feeling good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um something I think a lot about frequently. Certainly not my idea, but 
that uh, that the blues is really just joyful music, and um, certainly a lot of blues uh, is dance music and party music, and we don't we don't really do that. <laughs> but um, all it's it covers the whole spectrum of human emotion, and joy is a, a, a big big part of it. Um, joy and a sense of expansiveness and freedom. Um, and yeah, just as much as it can be made made for, for dancing and partying, it can be made for thinking and feeling too, and that's one of the things that I love about it. Um, so we're gonna play a song that is, uh, it's, uh, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a classic, I thought I was writing a classic blues theme of about leaving, about going from town to town. Because um, uh, at, the, at the time of uh, composing the, the song, I was traveling a lot and going to Europe and playing and um, leaving my wife at home a lot. And I just kind of, you know, could just feel uh, the difficulty of that separation. But I found um, that after I had after I'd written the song and been singing it for a little while, maybe about a year or so, um, my mom passed away. And uh, suddenly, and I felt when I started singing the song um, after that, that, that the meaning of the song changed uh, dramatically for me um, and no longer was about, uh, sometimes a song isn't about what you think it is, you know, it's, it's all of it's kind of beyond, beyond our control or our understanding. Um, so I'll play this for you now. I could tell you more about what it means to me now, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it, you know. Um, I can't control what anybody thinks. So this is called I'm Leaving.
you very, very much. Jay Scheffler on the harmonica, Lana Katz Katz on the fiddle, Grant Smith on the calabash. Ryan Lee Crosby. Thanks so much, yeah. Um, that was, in, uh, musically was inspired by uh, one time I got to see and meet Robert Belfour, who if, if you don't know him, he was just one of the best blues musicians. Um, I think he passed away in 2015, and I met him ever so briefly in 2014 and got to see him play once, and it's almost every note I play, it, I, I just think about Mr. Belfour. Um, so um, we're gonna play, we're gonna play one called Eight Years, Eight Years Gone. <coughs> this is another one that uh, kind of went through iterations and meanings, I think. Um, when, you, when you're working on a song or when you're listening to a song, I mean, you know, maybe you can think of a song that you love that you've been listening to your, your whole life and, and over the arc of, of your life, maybe the, your relationship to the song deepens in meaning. Um, I found at least that sometimes you may compose uh, a set of lyrics or arrangements or a song. A song can have its own you know, a song can have multiple lives too, um, just just like the rest of us. So, this is one of those tunes. Um, it's called Eight Years Gone." Thank you very much. Yes. 
Thank you. Enjoying this time with you all so much. It's uh, yeah, it's it's feeling really wonderful. You know it's a party when you have two drinks, right? I got Vita Coco in one one hand, coconut water, and then I got a sparkling orange here. This is a uh, party time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I quit drinking alcohol uh, 10 years and a week ago, and this is uh, as wild as I get. It's a funny thing to acknowledge, but it's, you know, it's human nature to want to sh share what's new. Yeah. But I would, <coughs> I would like to take a moment uh, before our next song um, just to say a little bit more uh, about what the blues means to me. Um, and you know it's it's a big it's a big topic, and uh, I really feel you know I can I can only just say a small amount, uh, just speaking from my own life and and my love of the music. But I I, I do think that if if you love the blues, you know sooner or later you're uh, it, it's something that's worth considering. What is the blues? What does it mean? Where does it come from? The list goes on and on. Um, and we don't have enough time in our set to really address all of it. But what, uh, what I do feel like I, I hope is meaningful to share um, is really just my personal relationship to it. And uh, you know, I, me I mentioned, um, I mentioned my, my mother earlier. And uh, I, I lost both my parents pretty young. And um, I really feel that they inform my music and my relationship to music significantly. And um, I, I really loved, I heard John Lee Hooker when I was a kid and I, I loved that music so much, but I didn't really start actively pursuing, um, you know, studying the blues and, and trying to live my life around it uh, probably about 12 years ago. And um, my mom lived her last few years of her life in the South and uh, I've always had, I grew up in Virginia and always felt a kind of call to the South. And um, that's where I met Ilana actually, is in Mississippi. And uh, even though we both were living in Boston at the time. Um, but uh, I, I recognize within myself that a, a, a yearning for um, peace and healing around many things is, is part of the pathway it's the, the doorway into the music for me, and I think that that is um, so much of, the blues can offer us so, so much uh, truth, wisdom, beauty, um, community, uh, and, and also I feel that, you know, really what we're dealing with when we look, look at what blues is and, and listen to it and listen to it with our hearts, that um, from my point of view, it's really, it's, it's a practice of compassion um, for ourselves, for, for others, for all people. It's, it's music that um, deals directly with suffering and, and relief from suffering. And so this next song I wanna play you, I mean, I really felt we're, we're gonna play <coughs> Catfish Blues, the way, uh, in part, the way Jimmy Duck Holmes taught it to me in Bentonia, and he, he was showing me uh, specifically how Jack Owens played it and if you if you don't if you if you know perhaps maybe Skip James is a famous Bentonia blues player but certainly Jimmy Duck Holmes is now uh, very well known and beloved and his teacher Jack Owens was they're all great musicians and Cornelius Bright there's uh, a history of wonderful music from Bentonia that's very unique and so we were sitting on the porch of that blue front uh, cafe that same day that he showed me I asked for water and I could feel, I could just feel my heart healing. Um, and I think there's just something that is so wonderful about how the music can, 
It just brings people together from all, it speaks to people across the whole world, whether you grew up with it or not, and it brings people together of, of it just, it breaks down walls and it's a beautiful, sacred thing. Um, and so I was thinking about that that morning when Jimmy showed me Catfish, and so now we're gonna play it for you. <laughs> Time is, is uh, flying right by from, from my point of view. We're gonna uh, close out our set tonight. Very, very excited uh, to hear Mr. Guy Davis. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Um, we got to hear a little bit of his sound check and I'm sure you know you're in for a treat. I would also, um, like to uh, say a very, very special thank you uh, to Bill Hurley, um, to Eric, to Connor, John, Mary Beth, um, everyone here at the Fallout Shelter for making us feel so welcome. Um, it's, it's been lovely, thank you.
we're gonna we're gonna finish our set tonight with a song by Reverend Robert Wilkins uh, out of North Mississippi. Um, this is on a record I, I made in Memphis uh, that came out last year. We recorded with Bruce Watson from Fat Possum, and uh, on the record, it's just Grant and I playing this song, but it's wonderful to get to share it with you, all four of us. Um, yeah, so th thanks again so much for your time and, and attention tonight. It's been... Wish I was in heaven sitting down. Wish I was in heaven sitting down. Oh, angel, oh my lord. Wish I was in heaven sitting down. Take away sin, give me grace. Take away sin. so much. Grant Smith on the calabash, Jay Scheffler on the harmonica, Lana Katz-Katz on the fiddle, Ryan Lee Crosby. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Fallout Shelter. There you go.
Yeah, I'm ready right now. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Guy Davis, and you are watching the Extended Play Sessions. How about that Ryan Lee Crosby? That cat was killing We're going to start out with a song I wrote called Limetown. Wrote every bit of it except the parts I stole.
Thank you. Thank you so much. from my Be Ready When I Call You CD. The song is called Got Your Letter In My Pocket. Slept out in the pouring rain. There have been times when I spent hiding. I was scared somebody would call my name. I was scared somebody would call my name. Well, your husband. was mine. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. looking glasses, not my seeing glasses, so I could, you know, it gets like that sometimes. Going to pick up this banjo, and I'm getting ready to do a song that I wrote called Shaky Pudding. Now, in America, pudding is a wonderful treat. It's a dessert. It's tasty. We like it. We love it, in fact. And we got it in a bowl in this hand. You got the spoon in this hand, and you know we play with it. Before we eat it, you gotta boing it at least once, you know, kind of like that. <laughs> then you go at it. And I know old Bill Hurley, he boings his twice, but you know, I don't need to get personal about that. Now, I was over in England a few years ago, back when uh, we still had a queen and Charles was just a prince, you know, and uh, so I tried some English pudding. Why did I do that? Y'all should have warned me. I ain't had, man, that stuff ain't nothing resembling the pudding that I know about. The, the texture alone, I mean, that it is so substantial, you could cut it with a knife, form it into bricks, and build something with it, you know? That, I'm pretty sure that's what they built the Tower of London out of, because nobody ever got out of that. Oh, I'm not going through there. Ooh, what's that? The English pudding, ooh. Okay. So, uh, so, I'm trying to stuff this stuff down my face, and it was, you know, we passed the point of politeness, I stood up and spit it out. I'm in an English pub, and the people looking at me, what's wrong with this American? You know? And I tried to explain to them, well, yeah, I'm from America, and in America, we, we play with pudding before we eat it, it's, it's dessert. And as one person, they stood up to defend their queen. They said, one never plays with the queen's pudding. So I've lived by that ever since. You know. <laughs> Shake it, put
Well, once I had a sweetheart with a face so pretty and fine, but she couldn't make that pudding shake. I left that gal behind, boys. I left that gal behind. Bye, Queenie. Shake gay pudding. Thank you. Thank you. Hire somebody to read this for me. I think it says Madison is a pig. No, you ain't got the same script as me. I can't say that. Okay. But I will tell you what it does say. It says something uh, that was a very pleasant surprise to me when I first heard this song at eight years old, and was an even more pleasant surprise when I found out many years later one of the people who wrote it. The song I'm getting ready to do requires two capos, so I'm going to put another one on there. Was listed as an author. Apparently, there was a guitar player at a party, and Judy held him captive in the bathroom, wouldn't let him out until... going to do a song that I wrote uh, a la Sonny Terry. It's called Long Gone Riley Brown. Now, uh, 
Many of you have heard Pete Seeger do that song, Long Gone. It's about a fellow escaping from the chain gang. And there's another song called Riley Walk the Water. And that's about the bloodhound that they send after the men who escape from the chain gang. Well, in this case, Riley is the protagonist, the antagonist, the guy the song is about. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get a phone call from my English teacher. guy. <laughs> I went to Oxford University. <laughs> Said, God, I done told ya. <laughs> I need you to repeat after me. Just sing a line back up to me as I sing it to you. He's long gone. He's long gone. Like a turkey through the corn. With his long clothes on. He's long gone. He's long gone. He's long Tell you a story about Riley Brown. He was a moonshine maker from outside town. Sheriff went to get him and he drawed his gun. That's when Riley began to run. He long gone. He long gone. Like a turkey through the cone. Put his long clothes on. He long gone. He long gone. Special pair of shoes that he kept in the sack Had a heel in the front and a heel in the back Riley took off when he heard the hounds coming Couldn't tell which way Riley was a running He long gone He long gone Like a turkey through the cone With his long clothes on He long gone He long gone Show could run, outran the bullets from the sheriff's gun. Ran through fire, ran through ice, ran across water like Jesus Christ. He long gone. He long gone. I can take it through the cone. With his long clothes on. He long gone. He long gone. Fooled him in jail, took away his money so he couldn't make bail. The townsfolk hollered when they found out that the jail tipped over and Riley walked out. He long gone. He long gone. 